Hey guys, um, we are going to be starting another poem today. Um, and the poem that we're starting today requires a little bit of um, background information. So we have two poems that we're gonna be comparing and contrasting. Uh, we have the To Helen by Edgar Allan Poe, and then we have Helen by HD or Hilda Doolittle. Um, and so I'm gonna share my screen here and give you a little bit of background information on Helen. Some of you guys know her and have heard stories about Helen of Troy. She is a famous mythical and historical historically mythical figure um, who in a lot of ways, in a lot of people's minds, started the, the Trojan War. And so I'm gonna share my screen and go through um, a few notes with you as we move from, um, and move into these two poems that you guys are going to be reading for today. Uh, so Helen of Troy is a well-known name in Greek mythology. She is a name that has um, found itself to um, mean a lot of things. So Helen of Troy is where we're going to start. Helen of Troy, the face that launched a thousand ships. Uh, and so the first port order of business is who she is. Um, Helen was a demigoddess. Um, she was the goddess of beauty and perfection, and she is known for her beauty. Um, and she has multiple names, but the most, po um, most popular of which is Helen of Troy. And she's also known as Helen of Sparta. Um, but her parents were Zeus, the father of the gods, and Leda, uh, which is the queen of Sparta. Uh, most stories around her center around her being a demigod, which means that she had a, a god as a father and then a mortal as a mother. Uh, but these stories we're going to skip over. The story claims that Zeus uh, tricked her mom into um, sleeping with him, and then she was created out of that. This is another option um, that Nemesis gave the egg that contained uh, Helen to her brother to Lita to raise um, but that she wasn't actually born by Lita but we're not going to get into that you just need to know that many people believe her to be a demigod um, some believe that she's more than that and that she was actually hatched from an egg which weird I don't even know um, and so she has quite a few uh, siblings her half sister is Clytemnestra um, half brother Castor none of this uh, matters to you right now but uh, she does have a very deep and and wide history throughout Greek mythology um, one of her most special powers um, as a demigoddess was that she was beautiful she was uh, considered to be the most beautiful woman in the world. Um, and in being the most woman in the uh, beautiful woman in the world, excuse me, I, I did that wrong. Um, she was kidnapped. Um, she was kidnapped by Theseus, which was the king uh, at the time. Uh, they uh, chose her because they wanted her beauty and they wanted to be one with Zeus. Um, and they thought that she was the answer. So Hel Helen was later rescued by her brothers um, in this specific story. Uh, but after Helen was kidnapped, uh, she returned to Sparta. Uh, many people wanted to marry her. She was a hot, uh, the, the bachelorette. Um, Tydericus, her earthly father, chose Menelaus. Um, who was in a lot of ways a pretty popular human at the time. Um, and they had four kids together, her first husband. Uh, Menelaus is the one that um, started this war, the Trojan War. Um, it was after she was married to Menelaus that she, the prin Paris, the prince of Troy, um, was a judge for a beauty contest. Um, there was a beauty contest between, uh, where Aphrodite bribed Paris to name her the winner, Aphrodite the winner, by offering Helen to him as a prize. Um, and so he said, she said, if you pick me, I will give you Helen of Troy. Uh, so he traveled to Sparta. He was treated as a royal. Uh, he, he judged this, um, this contest. And when Helen's husband left for Crete, uh, Paris and Helen <laughs> ran away. You can hear my dog barking. Uh, and so they ran off to Troy and they took with them Menelaus's riches. Uh, oh, what's that? Oh, the joys. Uh, and so when the people of Troy saw Helen's beauty, they arranged for Paris and Helen's marriage. And obviously her first husband was ticked uh, because he got robbed uh, by bo of both his wife and 
his gold. And so it is because of this that the Trojan War begins. So Helen runs off with, with Paris uh, because Aphrodite promised this girl that she didn't even have to promise. And so she runs off with Paris. And then my question in all of this is like, does she get to say, does Helen get to say like who she wants to be with ever? Um, so Menelaus is upset and he starts to Troy. Uh, he wanted to get Helen back. Uh, so he goes to Paris. He's re he um, wa recruits all of Helen's uh, former um, suitors and takes them to Troy with him with a saying that um, this is beautiful, fantastic, terrible beef. It is the reason that these ships then go and attack the city of Troy where Paris and Helen are now living. Um, and so after 10 years of fighting, the Greeks, um, still not able to breach the walls of Troy, uh, they designed this hollow horse, uh, the Trojan horse here, as you can see in the picture. And the Trojans thought that they were going to, they designed this hollow horse to carry the Greek troops into the city. Um, the Trojans thought that they had won the war and they'd take the horse like a war training, like a, a peace offering, if you will. And so they, they're like, oh, gosh, you know, they, the Greeks are hiding in the horse. And so I think you, um, they had like a horse into the city. And it was like, I draw the horse to them all. And that is how the Trojan War ends. Um, and so then the moral of this is after the Greeks won, Menelaus decides to kill Helen for her lies. He's taken with her beauty instead after he saw her for the first time again. He left. Um, and then the person beautiful on the outside and not on the inside. And that was like terrible beauty. It's beautiful, but also painful. So so this story and this specific character within literature has carried us through countless stories. And the two poems that we're going to be reading today do the same thing. Uh, this is because we values heroes and different stories that we know uh, to, continue, to continue on. So, um, with that said, I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, and, oops, yeah. And we'll talk to you guys today a little bit about these poems. I'm not going to be annotating them for you line by line. Um, but I am going to be on Zoom. These are not easy poems, um, but with this history in mind, you're going to be talking about what these authors are feeling towards this specific character. Um, the tone of these poems is what I'm looking for you to be thinking about as you read them. Tone, as you may remember, is the, the feeling that we as readers are supposed to have as we read it. Tone is the, the emotion words that these, these authors use to instill an emotion within us. And so as you're reading it, I want you guys to be thinking of those things. Um, I encourage you guys to annotate it. There's one sheet of paper um, and you can it, print it off again or you can... Um, put it on Google Docs and annotate it with comments. A lot of you guys have been doing so beautifully with this. I am looking for you to engage with meaning. I am looking for you to engage with literary devices and so on and so forth. Um, the questions, there's 10 of them um, and they are asking you to do the same. So. I'm going to be ending this video uh, to say that if in fact you want help annotating, that is what I'm going to be doing on Zoom today. Um, so you can go ahead and log on to Zoom at your time and I will be helping you and using my document camera to annotate with you and read through these poems together. Uh, so that is my plug for the Zoom meetings. If you don't need that, go on your own. Otherwise, we'll see you guys at your Zoom meetings today. Have a good day. We'll talk to you later.